In August 2005, a group of five friends decided to explore an obscure and mysterious underwater cave that nestled in the depths of Y Mountain in the heart of Provo, Utah. But while it may look innocent to the outside world, its merciless reputation was unknown to them. Little did they know, danger lurked inside, and that one would emerge to tell the tale. This is the tragic tale of the Gollum Cave incident. On a Wednesday evening, as the clock struck midnight, the group found themselves engaged in an interesting chatter. Their conversation was about a secret cave on the slopes of Y Mountain, a familiar place for many local students due to its nearness to the BYU campus. The group, comprised of Jennifer Galbraith, Blake Donner, Ariel Singer, Scott McDonald, and Joseph Ferguson, were no strangers to the thrill of exploration. They had spent many evening telling each other tales of their past adventures, each one more daring than the last. And so, when the opportunity came to venture into the depths of the Gollum Cave, they seized it with eager anticipation. At 3 a.m. Thursday, as the sun sets below the horizon and the night falls, the group gathered their supplies and set out on their journey. Guided by the dim glow of their flashlights, they made their way through the darkness, their hearts pounding with excitement. One of the five friends had explored the cave before and survived. Jennifer Galbraith encouraged her friends to enter the cave with her, assuring them that it is possible to hold their breath and reach the other side without any problems. She was confident, despite suffering hypothermia and fainting the first time she tried to enter the Cave of Death. After a discussion about who was going first, Jennifer decided to take the lead since she was the only one who already been in the cave before. They all watched Jennifer slowly disappearing in the water. The entrance to the passageway is around 90 feet inside the cave. The tunnel was really small, two feet in width and four feet in height. At 5 a.m., all four arrived successfully to the inner chamber, ready to take a breath in the small space above the surface and to swim to the next opening. Blake Donner, Scott McDonald, and Ariel Singer bravely followed Jennifer into the ominous depths of the narrow, dark cave. The fifth person, Joseph Ferguson, didn't join them and waited outside for their return. At 4.30 a.m., Jennifer submerged into the frigid waters with only one flashlight. One by one, the others descended into the same tight passageway, each assuming that the previous person had safely reached the other side. However, tragically, none of them emerged from the cavern's depths. As you can imagine, the narrow tunnel couldn't fit more than one person at a time, so each person likely got into the water expecting a clear exit but instead ran into a blockage as each person ran out of breath before reaching the exit. This would explain why all the friends were found facing the same direction one after the other, facing the exit hole. After they entered the tunnel, there was a rope underwater that led from one side of the cave to the other. That helps divers to pull themselves through the tunnel, but if they miss the rope, they risk entering a dead end of the cave which is a few feet past the hole. Brian Lamprey once explored this cave and missed the exit with the rope, and ended in a dead end a few feet away from the hole. It looked like that none of them used the rope, meaning that they also could have missed the cave opening, gotten lost, and drowned as a result. It is the so-called Cave of Death. Witnesses say there is a hole about 100 feet deep that leads to an underwater passage, and then to a crawl space about 15 feet long. The victims used it to get to a nearby cave. It's the same thing Brian Lamprey did. Step by step, they navigated the narrow passageways and dangerous terrain, their senses heightened by the anticipation of what lay ahead. With each twist and turn, they delved deeper into the heart of the mountain, their excitement growing with each passing moment. After swimming the 15 feet to reach the small cave where they could stand, the group of friends found themselves in a surreal environment. Despite the cramped space, they were amazed at the cave's hidden wonders. After they swam further, but the tunnel got tighter and tighter. After a while, they were probably anxious and out of breath, their hearts racing with adrenaline. When they broke the surface, they would have inhaled deeply with relief. However, the air in this confined space was probably bad air. In cave diving, bad air refers to any air that is not equal to the normal composition of 21% oxygen and 79% nitrogen, with trace amounts of other gases. Because this cave was stagnant and had no freshwater source, carbon dioxide would likely have increased. As people spent more time in the inner chamber, oxygen levels would decrease over time, 
and carbon dioxide would build up. And then, in an instant, tragedy struck. Jennifer, the first to attempt escape, found herself trapped in the narrow confines of the tunnel, her lungs feeling painful and burning for air as she desperately searched for the exit. But as hard as she tried, she could not find her way out, her strength failing her as the darkness closed in around her. In the suffocating darkness of the cave, Jennifer and the other girl experienced a harrowing struggle for breath. As they gasped for air, their chests tightened with the weight of panic, each desperate inhale bringing a little relief. With each passing moment, the surrounding air grew thicker, heavy with the suffocating presence of carbon dioxide. Ariel was next to leave the secret cave. She would have been trying to take deep breaths before putting her face under the water and quickly swimming forward with her last burst of energy. She searched with her hands for the opening. It would have been completely unreal to feel the body of your friend floating in this narrow, dark tunnel. The opening was supposed to be big enough, but panic sets in as the opening was too small to push their head through. In a moment of panic, Ariel would have been desperate, gasping for air, and maybe have not quite realized that her friend was unconscious and probably close to death. Meanwhile, Blake and Scott would have experienced the effects of the decreasing oxygen and heightened carbon dioxide levels, making their situation really terrifying and intense. They tried to keep breathing from the small space, but then saw the two girls weren't moving anymore. It must have been terribly traumatizing to have seen the two girls floating and knowing that they might be next. Blake saw Ariel floating, and he tried to push her towards the small exit to save her, and then save himself. But it took more strength than he thought, and he was probably unconscious by the time rescue teams arrived. Joseph sat outside, still waiting for his friends to return, not knowing that they were in terrible danger. No clear plan had been made so he didn't know how long they planned to stay in the cave. He kept an eye on the hole filled with water in the cave, but there was still no movement from his friends. It was 6.25 a.m. and the group still hadn't returned. Joseph decided to call for help, first a few friends, then the police. Upon arrival at the location, law enforcement initiated an extensive rescue and recovery effort. Search and rescue teams, along with police and firemen, swiftly arrived at the scene. However, due to the cave's perilous conditions, crews proceeded cautiously. Recognizing the confined spaces and the underwater passage's dangers, rescuers stationed themselves near the cave's entrance to prevent further entry. Before they ventured into the water, emergency crews drained approximately six inches of water from the submerged passage using pumps. Additionally, they began pumping oxygen into the cave to sustain any potential survivors running out of air. Once the water level decreased by two feet, creating a safer entry, rescuers started their search within the cavern at the cave's rear. After four hours of searching, they finally found the first body. Jennifer's lifeless body was found floating in the dark, cold tunnel. After a few hours, the other three friends' bodies were found facing the exit hole. Jennifer's body may have blocked the path for the remaining three friends as they struggled to escape. One of the bodies was discovered on the tunnel floor, while the other two were found floating in the water. Autopsies confirmed that drowning was the cause of death and gathered evidence to unravel the tragic sequence of events. Police said the men wore shorts and sandals, while the women wore shorts, shirts, and tennis shoes. Remains of a flashlight were found in the water, although it remained uncertain whether the flashlight belonged to a member of the group, according to the police statement. The family of victim Jennifer Galbraith knew their daughter loved adventures, but they never thought fun would lead to death. The one thing that came to her father's mind first was that she wanted to be famous. Jennifer Galbraith loved music and played bass guitar. She was even in a band. In fact, all the people who died in the cavern this morning were in that band. After the tragedy, they closed up the cave as a sad reminder of the lives lost during their adventure. Four young adults who were brave enough to face the danger in this cave. In the peaceful quiet of Y Mountain, you could still feel the sadness of what happened, a warning for those who come after. The closed entrance to the cave has become a kind of memorial, in memory of the four people who died in it. If you have watched this far, thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe before leaving.